Mulligan Hall, Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score always a delight to have Coach Wanstead with us, and he is here in studio. And Dave, um, you know, we, we had a texter earlier who has a conspiracy theory. He said that the Bears are trying to trade away all of their defenders because they want Justin Fields to operate as a pocket passer, and they're going to force their team to have to play from behind and throw the ball. We were saying during the break, we felt a sense of relief, not only when he came out of the game, but that they didn't try to make him a pocket passer when they were trailing in the at late in the game because that's not what the strength of the offense is. That's not what the strength of the player is. And frankly, that pass rush would terrify you if you were trying to play catch up against that. Yeah, this button. There you go. Okay, That's- sorry, bud. Um, they uh, the interception, unfortunately uh, or unfortunately, you know, they called uh, the Cowboy for roughing the passer. That one interception, that was a straight drop back, and it wasn't an in an outside rusher. You know, it wasn't Parsons coming off the edge. I mean, it was an inside rusher for the Cowboys that that got to Justin and and caused the uh, the interception on that. But uh, no, you know, you got to give – it starts with the head coach, Matt Eberflus and, and Luke Getze and this offensive staff. Guys, when they came in here, I know for a fact it was going to be a modified Green Bay offense. That's where our offensive coordinator, Getze, came from. Right. And here we go through all mini camps, all OTAs, all training camp, and everything's looking good against air, you know, how it always does. And then they come to the realization this is what we got up front, and this is what we got at receiver, and this is what we got to do to have a chance to function on offense. And did you ever, guys, I remember the days when we sat here and we had more penalties than we did rushing yards. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and we're leading the wow. National Football League in running the football. It, it's fun. It, 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 the, the, there, there's elements of it that are fun to watch. Yeah, that's you can, it, you, that's all I'm you saying. You can respect you know? the toughness and the way they're able to run the ball. But Dave, I, I want to go back. You, you, you said because of what they saw in the offensive line, because of the limitations in the receiving core. But what did they see in the quarterback, do you think, that in the first, you know, before the mini-buy, in the first six games, if you will? Because what has happened in the last two games, and I don't think it's, it's, it's accidental, but the way they have schemed this, the way they have called this, it's playing into Justin Fields' strength, clearly. So do, did they find the sweet spot there with him? In terms of when he doesn't throw, when he's not asked to drop back in the pocket, that you are definitely now finding ways to maximize his potential. Yeah, I think three things have happened. Number one, they they sit Justin down and they say, listen, for you to have success right now and not be under distress, we need to move you in the pocket. Now, that's not going to give you the whole field and the quarterbacks and you know, Dan Marino and all the quarterbacks, you know, Peyton Manning, we want to have six receivers options. We're going to, that's going to cut down your options, but it's going to get you on the move. It's going to get you away from the pressure and you'll, and we'll get one or two guys open. That's the first thing. Okay, coach, I'm in. The second thing is for us to put more stress on the defense, we need to have you involved in the run game. And against the Patriots, they had six different quarterback runs not scrambles no 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 put that aside right okay i'm talking about the quarterback draw i'm talking about the quarterback counter i'm talking about the quarterback power i'm talking about the quarterback sweep these are all designed plays that the bears are executing really good so now all of a sudden it's third down and five and you make the call as a defensive coordinator oh my god is it going to be a pass is it going to be a screen is it going to be justin fields running you know, what's what? So, I mean, it puts the defense in a whole different stress level as far as trying to figure out what the Bears are going to do. So, I think, you know, these were conversations. I'm sure that they said, Justin, if you want to have success and we want this offense to have success, this is what the steps that we've got to take. And and he bought in, obviously, and the and the coaches are doing a fantastic job of of the only thing that bugs me, and this is a pet peeve of mine, throw the ball deep. At least twice yeah. a half. That's yeah. my battle cry, and I want to see the Bears do that more. Even if we don't complete them, we'll get some penalties. Even if they're and, dropped. Even if, well, oh yeah, even and, if they're dropped. Even if so, they're dropped, I would, I would sleep better at night <laughs> seeing them drop. And who are you going to throw to? I'd throw to one guy. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I wouldn't throw the ball to Jones. I wouldn't throw the ball to Pettis deep. 
You're throwing a Mooney. That's the only guy. Somehow figure out a way to get him open deep. Okay, and I, I don't argue with that. I, I do wonder, is there, Dave, from your experience, is there a tipping point for a team? And and I mean, you've just traded away the single season sack leader in team history. You just traded away the leading tackler in the entire NFL, not just your team. And now you're going to try to play defense against the team, and you've you got, obviously, guys that aren't as good as the guys you've traded away. Is that is that a tipping point? And, and like, with the offensive line, they have they had at one point four guys out. They had three guys they projected as starters out, and then they had uh, – Tevin Jenkins had to go into the tent for, for a, a couple of plays. What is the tipping point on that, or is the talent level of the backups – Basically the same as the start. Does it matter if you're trading everyone away? When does that actually hurt you? When you, If you're a defense coordinator and now you find out, okay, uh, who do I have? Miami? Oh, yeah, I, I got a couple of receivers. I still have my whole secondary. I don't need a pass rush. I don't need anybody right. in the middle of the field. Well, you know, the, <laughs> God, I forgot about Miami. You just, we got we, we to gotta play them this week. Uh, no, no, seriously. You know what, though? I, I don't know if there's that much difference. You know, every player has, every team has three, four guys that are difference makers. Uh, I can relate back to when we were, we, when we weren't, we were terrible at, at Dallas that first year. And I, as a coach, as a defensive coordinator, I didn't think I could come up with as many gimmicks and motivational things every week as I did. It was amazing the stuff that we would all sit down and come <laughs> up with. I, mean, I think three times I had the, the young coaches put a drape over our board of statistics because we were so bad. And I would come in and say, a new season. I think I said a new season defensively like four <laughs> times. You know, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we, we weren't accomplishing any Stopped of our, over. We weren't accomplishing any, any of our goals. goals. Yeah. So I'd say, put a damn drape up there and we're starting over. And they said, Coach, this is the second or third time this season that we're starting over. I said, well, I, we got to tell them something to kind of get their minds going. Yeah. So it's, but, you know, as I said in the beginning, don't lose sight that there's a lot of guys that are getting an opportunity to play, that are trying to make it in this league. And love the game, and, and is, that's, that, is and, that how you started the rotation of your defensive line? Because you didn't have enough talent, you thought more was less. Or no, less was no. More? Actually, no? we started that rotation at the University of Miami when we had Cortez Kennedy backing up Russell Maryland. We had too. We had too too uh, much. Spoiled for rotation choice. We had too much talent, Molly. Oh, so, <laughs> okay, that's pretty so, good. So, Dave, with the the Dolphins, you had some personnel uh, responsibilities. Obviously, coaching. So the, the blending of the two, being in charge and having the, an eye on the future with one on the present, I, I'm, I'm leading into this idea that the Bears would have a conversation with Justin Fields about their intentions, about their moves, sure. explaining them to the – is there value in that? Do you think that's happened? Absolutely. Because of the drastic change, think about what direction our offense has gone in the last six, seven weeks, you know, from – from a drop back team, and we were hoping they'd run a screen the first game or two. You know, we sat there and said, God, they ran a screen. We actually have that in to now it's boots, it's quarterback runs, it's quarterback. I mean, it's it has really evolved into, I think, very wisely into what gives our players the best chance to be successful. That's good coaching. But coming out of these two trades, do you think they had to at least Brace him for what's ahead. No, warn him no. About. I don't. I don't think he that has any bearing on his mind. I don't think he he doesn't. The players don't think about how value at this stage with a young team. If this was a Super Bowl team, if this was Green Bay, right. I think it, players are a lot more sensitive to who can help them win and who can't yeah. help them win. Right. But at this stage, did here, you just call Aaron Rodgers sensitive? No, no, I smart. Okay, whatever. I mean, I think they're aware up there. You know what I mean? Because right. their right. expectation is the Super Bowl. I mean, that's where they're it's Super Bowl or bust. And so everybody's a little more sensitive to uh to, to what we need to get to the Super Bowl. And rightfully so. That's what you want. Where I think the Bears, new coach, new GM, all the trades, all the you know, back and forth, uh, the rebuilding process. I don't think these players are, are I mean, that, that's not a big deal to them right now. Let's just get ready to see if we can beat the Dolphins and go from there. 
Nobody wants I, to hear that, but I think that's the reality of I, people. I'm curious, Dave. Did you watch a lot of college football this weekend? And yes, did, yes, did you I see I, the Michigan State, oh Michigan. Yes, I did. And now Jim Harbaugh said those guys should be charged, and the player is talking about pressing charges against the guys that kind of criminal activity. Him. Yeah. Yep. Yes. What, yeah. That, what that, do you think of that? Well, it, it was kind of. Uh, yeah, when I just saw the same thing everybody else saw when the guy was down and they're stomping. I mean, and not crossed the line. Yeah, it, it crossed the line. I mean, we were in one of the best brawls ever at Miami on convicts and Catholics at Notre Dame. <laughs> Randy Shannon was my starting linebacker, and I think he had his his. They took his helmet and they busted his cheekbone, and I said, "Well, somebody find him a helmet because you know we're we're kicking off here in about two minutes," you know. Wow. So I mean, it was a, one of those brawls in is, the tunnel with it, South Bend. So is that the same but thing? It, there no, was only one it, entrance and exit. And, yeah, and everybody same, got loaded same, up. Same, in the tunnel? same deal. But there was no stomping. There was no yeah. kicking. There was no you know guys were. It was the push in and back and forth. It was vicious. It was violent. Yeah, yeah, that that thing there looked like a a street mugging. You know, yeah, I mean that's what and 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 what's the motivation behind it? I mean, do these kids? They're, they're, there's I mean, because one's from one school and one's the other, it made no sense to me. Very disappointing. I could see how 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 both coaches and both universities are embarrassed by this. They're hurt by this. I mean, it's not good for college football. And uh, I'm sure the players that are involved are are, to are really regretting this. And, and they're saying, what did we do? You know, that, that was one of the stupidest things that we ever did in our lives. Unfortunate, definitely. Dave, I want to get back to the NFL trade deadline for a moment because he said something, I think, uh, during the break. And Maybe some of it spilled over on the air, but like it used to be the trade deadline would come and go in the NFL and you'd kind of shrug and there wouldn't be as many blockbuster moves. And maybe that's overstating it, but significant moves that makes a team feel like they're in a better position to contend like the Ravens feel this morning. Von Miller. Von Miller last year is a great example. Yep. What do you expect before the day ends today for the Bears? Are there any moves that you would explore, and, and why have we seen this gradually change? No, I don't. I don't see the Bears acquiring anybody. I think the Bears have the mentality that they're going to build this thing through the draft. How about trading? And that's, could they could they trade a David Montgomery if he has oh, a, God, a after, contract that's expiring? Could they trade sure, Kevin Jenkins? Sure, because sure, they thought absolutely. they might trade him. They talked about that. Could they trade Eddie Jackson? Because he's got a big contract and they're trying to, to manage their salary. Well, some, somebody's really got to want you before you can make a good trade. You yes. know, I mean, that's a thing. And uh, Montgomery, you know, would be a guy. Um, I, I don't know. You know, I, I look, you look at the carries last week and Herbert and Montgomery, one had 15 carries, one had 16. So they're <laughs> they're splitting the playing time between those two guys. That wouldn't surprise me. If someone was looking for a running back to get over the hump and they wanted Montgomery, or Herbert, it wouldn't surprise me. Not not one bit. Uh, I don't see the Bears going out there and getting anybody to, no. to help this team. I mean, I think their mindset is the draft. And, you know, I think this has changed a little bit. There's more trades now in the last five, six years. It's doubled than what it was even back in 2010. I was looking at those numbers this morning. And and I think they that, moved the trade deadline. Yeah, they, they, they moved. It, it the used to be like week three or something. What would you? you wouldn't even. It's good for fans. The injuries it, hadn't it, even it's, kicked it's in. More, it's more interesting. Yeah, it's it, more compelling. And, and I think the other thing too is what I said to, talking to Rick Spillman. Rick said the GMs now are you know it used to be okay we drafted and we did this we're done for the year you go coach them David you know good luck with the season. That was kind of the role of the personnel guy. Now his job is on the line just as much or more so than ever before with the coach. So I think he's always looking, uh, you know, to try to improve somewhere. So I think it's caused a sense of urgency with, with general managers and, and owners and coaches. Everybody wants to see how quick the, the team can turn it around and win a Super Bowl. You know, it's a microwave society right now, and it carries over to the NFL Hey, Sean McVay was there three years or whatever it was, and he won a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, let's see what we can do to, to win one this year in Philly, or let's see what we can do. You know, we're, Great point. we're that close. It's uh, The Giants traded their first-round pick to the Bears. They all got fired, right? That that was the first trade he'd ever made in the first round. They've got, got him, history. Got yeah, him fired. After that. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, I think Tevin Jenkins, you mentioned him, and Molly and I talked about him earlier. I think he's closer to probably getting a second contract than he is to getting traded. I understand why they might deal him, but why would you get rid of somebody now who has maybe found himself in a position where he is 
maybe thriving is overstating it, but he's certainly having better, more success here than he expected him to have coming into this year. I, I would say this poss possibly the same thing circumstances with Roquan. It's not production. It's not playing. I think it does his personality. And I, I don't know Jenkins. I've never met him. I love him. I think he's doing a great job, but is his personality. Does it fit in hmm. With what they want, they don't know. like him on Wednesday, right? Then they uh, that's when it. they had Lucas Patrick start. How common is that, Dave? I, 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 you know, I, from a coaching standpoint, how do you, do you turn? Do you make decisions on players based on things that you don't see on tape? Well, there, there's not. Yes, absolutely. There, I mean, and maybe there's. That's what I'm saying with Roquan. The Bears know more about it than we do, and uh, there's got to be something more to the story. I promise you, whether it's contract or person, I, I don't know, but. If but, you were the only team in the league to put in a claim for Alex Leatherwood and pick up the contract of a first-round draft pick who played right guard, are you now, if you have a chance to move a right guard, clearing a spot for someone that you thought could be a starter for you and you're paying him like it's that? It's an understandable you're not question. A lot of people. It is an understandable question, even though Tevin Jenkins has taken a step forward. He's been good. Makes yeah, oh, I think he's I definitely been good. You know, I... Uh, um, yeah, no, I mean, that that's my feeling there. I mean, I, I don't know what else to add. So, to Dave, it. It, all right, it, Sunday. Just, they, coaches do make decisions. There's not one player that's bigger than the team. I mean, we used to preach that and hear that since I've been coaching. And, uh, and sometimes coaches have to stand up and say, this is not how we want to do things, whether it's meetings, off the field, attitude, whatever it is. And uh, you, you want you want everybody on the same page. That's part of a team. This is a team sport. Sunday, Soldier Field, noon kickoff. It is the Wanstead Bowl. The Dolphins and the Bears. We yeah. <laughs> we be flipping the the coin at midfield. Are you doing a lot of Miami radio this week, Dave? Don't you go uh, on there too? Soon? No, you know what? I got a call, a text late last night for that. But uh, no, I, I've got. I've got a full plate right here in yeah. Chicago. You know, <laughs> will you be changing your pick when you're on in Miami if you do it, as opposed to the one you're about to give us? Oh, God. you want a pick? <laughs> you know, we want a pick. Yeah, I know. You know, uh, this is. Um, we wanted a pick last Tuesday, and it was right off the Monday nighter, and you were mad. We gave you a break last week, not yeah. this week. Yeah, yeah, you know, I I like the Dolphins just because of the pass rush. You know, if two you give two or too much time, the receivers they have. Uh, you know, pressure always beats coverage. You guys heard me say that. Well, if you don't have pressure, it's very difficult to cover. I don't care how good our corners are and our safeties. You know, Hill and Waddle and that crew, they got a big tight end. I can't think of his name right now. <clears throat> God, he's he's a player. Um, I, I just think that the Dolphins have too much firepower. And with our lack of pass rush right now, it uh, begins with a K, it, right? It, it's it's going to be, yeah. Gisecki. Gisecki. Yeah, 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 yeah. The tight end, yeah. yeah the he's dancer. A, I think he's a great it's, player. You I know, knew he, there was a K in there. Yeah. Somewhere. But, uh, the dancer. They, they have weapons. Right. And yeah, they, so, so they, I, did, they did with Tua what the Bears are, are going to be encouraged to do for Justin Fields. Surround him with weaponry. Go get a left tackle. Yep. And let him thrive. they got two offensive linemen. They've got the receivers. And, and, you know, now the good news is the Dolphins' defense really struggles. They have not been a big pressure team. They've changed a little bit from when Brian Flores was a coach here. They're not blitzing as much. So the Bears are going to have a chance to move the ball on them, and the Bears are going to have a chance to score some points. Uh, They're going to have to. And and so it's, oh it, it, you know, it, the way they play, as long as they don't give up the big play, that'll be the thing this week. Do not give up the big play. If you don't give up the big play and make the Dolphins go long and hard, coach, you know, the Dolphins coach, will coach. make mistakes. Tyreek Hill's coming to town. They're going to give up the big play. Well, you hope, you hope not. God, I wouldn't want you talking to my defense. <laughs> you know what, though? I mean, think about it. The Bears ran 71 plays and, and held the ball for 36 minutes, and they gave up 49 points. Yeah. They well, gave yeah, up the, the big play the, all day. The, the Dolphins averaged about 10 yards a play. I mean, I mean the Cowboys, yeah. you know I mean? It was crazy. Last thing, Dave, how often did you tell your quarterback that if he throws an interception and the guy falls down, you have to tag him? <laughs> never. So never. Never. And I said that when it happened. Justin Fields. Yeah. Everybody said, what are you going to tell him on the sidelines? I ain't going to tell him a damn thing yeah. on the sidelines. He's looking at – they in, in Jerry's world in Texas, <laughs> they get a jumbo screen that's half the size of this building. It's true. I man. mean, by the time he got to the sideline, he saw himself in full – 
you know, 3D. R- 3D right there. on the screen oh, HD and knew what happened. You don't yeah. have to say a word to him. All right, Dave. Thank you. Great You're stuff, the best. Dave. We appreciate it. All right, guys.